goddamn tempo. That sucks. So I wake up bright and early this morning. Look outside. I didn't get up that early. Winter came back. Do you ever have those days where just everything's going wrong? Nothing's really working out. I mean, there's wind out here, so you guys probably can't even hear what I'm saying. Oh, here's. So, like I said, winter came back. The tempo that was covering Jesse's car said, I'm out of here. And it ends up way the hell out there. One of those days. But, anyways, let's get the show on the road. Today's episode how to degrease and clean your transmission. Instead of worrying about the weather and thinking about how much that bothers me, how much I'm disappointed, let's just hide in the garage and get to work. I get in here, I start organizing stuff, I'm missing all kinds of tools. I can't find stuff I need to get going on there. It's one of those days where everything is going bad. Today I got tool problems, I got camera problems, it's cold out, and I'm already freaking out. So little piece of advice to give you. When you're in that moment where you're just starting to get really frustrated and you're starting to get angry about stuff, you might get to that point where you want to start throwing things around and smashing stuff. I don't know if that's a good outlet. Can't say don't do it, because I've done it. <laughs> but I think that's the moment where you have to just stop. Stop everything, put it down, take a deep breath, take a break for a little while. Go read a magazine, go sit on the dumper, whatever. I didn't want to leave the house today but i'm just gonna go get some tools stop for a coffee listen to some music on the way relax enjoy the moment let's go take care of that stuff so while i'm waiting for the car to warm up before i leave we're gonna try a little experiment in degreasing we're gonna use this stuff i'm not much for instructions and reading but i'll read it real quick and so what i'm thinking is we soak down the transmission in this stuff and let it sit while we go shopping so this is my Turbo 350 from the Acadian. It's a three-speed automatic transmission. It leaks, it's dirty, but it does have a shift kit. So the instructions say not to let it dry on whatever it is and to test it to see if it does any discoloring or stuff, mostly on aluminum, glass, painted surfaces. Not much for instructions and I'm a little bit of a gambler, so let's soak this thing down and just kind of roll the dice on it. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff on there. I hope this stuff works because I just used up the whole bottle. We'll check on this when we get back. Putting in more fuel. Bloody and all. I don't know if you can see this video, but it's snowing. Freaking snow. Back at Canadian Tire, you need a few things. You need a garden hose to wash stuff, that transmission, cars, a nozzle, and some grinding stuff. I have a ton of chopping discs at home, like for cutting. That's not a problem. I'm gonna have to get the chassis nice and smooth after I'm done chopping all the mounts off. Find something for that. I'll get a 40 and 80. So I was gonna buy a new nozzle for the hose, a new hose. Um, I'll get this little thingy so I can Frankenstein the one I have. Then I'll pick a cool looking push push thing nozzle. And I'm a sucker, so I'll just buy the one I think looks cool. <laughs> I'm always gonna get the Fireman one because it looks cool, but this one's 10 bucks cheaper, so. Don't even care anymore. So we're on our way back now. Like I said, I needed to take a little break because yeah, everything was going wrong. And that's just what you should do. Just slow down, take a breather. So went for a ride to Canadian Tire. Uh, got myself a nice coffee, got my name on it. Just to relax a bit, I'm gonna listen to some nice calming music. Okay, so I just got back home. Um, the transmission started to dry. And maybe I'll take a steel brush or something on that before we finish washing it off and uh, Maybe it'll turn out like all polished aluminum or something. That'd be cool, right? <laughs> so here's what I got today. I got this Polycast Protractor. It's magnetic. Now that's gonna allow me to find the proper angles I need for the front end once we get started on that. I also bought this handy little magnet thing. These come in super handy. I think I have two more somewhere, but who knows where. And also since I have to cut off the mounts, these motor mounts and 
these shock mounts and I want to make everything look really smooth after I chop that off. So I got some of these. Hopefully that'll help me smoothen everything else once I pass over it with the grinder and get the big stuff and the, the big chunks. And, but first and foremost, we have to work on this transmission. So I have to get all that degreaser off of it somehow. So I bought a little thingy to fix the garden hose that I have outside that was scrap and uh, a little squirt squirt gun so I can, you know, I needed it. This thing is still soaking, still degreasing. I'm gonna look for my little wire brushes and we'll get into like the really tough spots and see what kind of crap comes out of there. my wire brush and try to loosen up all the really thick spots of grime and there's some grime that's really stuck on there so what I'm gonna try to do now is in the door we'll hose it off hopefully it comes out clean my expectations are probably way too high and it's probably just gonna look like still dirty and nasty but it's a step in the right direction so it was straight up winter this morning now it's warmed up a little bit so I could probably open the door Definitely wanting to do that to get the hose and also because when I spray stuff, I don't want it sprayed all over the place in here. So I made sure I have enough length for that hose because if I'm gonna wash a car, I wanna be able to make it to the front of the car if the car's backed up to the garage door. Hopefully I got the right size, but we'll put this onto the hose and chop off the piece, put that in so we can attach the new nozzle sprayer push push thingy you know what i mean for the life of me i can't find my tin snip so we'll just try a regular pair of scissors eureka so that's what happens i got all excited and then uh, i forgot to put the hose clamp on thank god it's not like a fuel line or something uh so yeah remember that one always put your clamps on first so you don't have to completely undo them like i had to do and then hey, it'll go a lot easier for you so that's done let's put the gun on and see what happens I'm pretty confident it's gonna make a big mess hosing this thing off and getting all that degreaser and all the gunk off of it. And I'm also pretty confident that I can get more pressure out of putting my thumb over top of that hose than I will out of using this thing. We'll see how it looks when I'm done. I think I just spent eight dollars for nothing. Well, that's not working out at all. <laughs> so let's try the air hose. So I cleaned it off. I could feel like the grit and stuff like smacking me in the face and poking me and stuff. So note to self, safety glasses next time. It's getting cold in here. It's gonna go down to minus something again tonight because mother nature doesn't like any of us apparently. So I'm gonna shut the garage door. We'll take a look at how clean this thing is not. Okay, so I can't really say I was expecting a lot. Well, I kind of was, <laughs> but uh, we'll take a look at it. I didn't clean inside where the torque converter goes and stuff. I didn't want to put water through there or any kind of pressure because I'm not sure what that would essentially do if it would leak inside or not. And I don't know how far I'm going to take it apart. But what I'm doing now is basically what I'm calling phase one of the Acadian build. And that's just get it running, get it functioning before I start going crazy with the modifications. I've got to make sure that it runs on its own in basic form because if you got no foundation, you can't build your mansion, right? So, so that's how it looks for now. But I think I'm going to get in there with a little more detail and some finer brushes and we'll see if we can get it any cleaner than that. Uh, I don't want to go too crazy. I'm not going to polish it, but at the same time, it's kind of got to be a little presentable because the engine I'm putting in is actually very clean. So, see so what we can do. Since I'm completely out of degreaser, I'm going to use some more of my uh, Simple Green little combo here. And I'm going to take this fine wire brush. I'm going to try to get in there a bit more and see if I can make it any cleaner because it's pretty dirty still. 
So I think this cleanup process is gonna actually take me a lot longer than anticipated. I'm gonna keep at it. I don't know. Okay, you know what? Let's get crazy. Get some power tools. I think I got a good one. So I am starting to get somewhere. Um, show you guys that. So as you can see, it's getting kind of clean. It's kind of getting to where I want it to be. Uh, the cleaner that thing gets, the dirtier the shop gets, and the dirtier my face gets. But that's all part of the game, right? Right. So I kind of got all the little small spots, all the little nooks and crannies. I got those kind of cleaned out. So next step is I'm gonna take Bubba here and see what kind of damage I can do with that. It's only on a battery powered drill, so it's not spinning very fast, which is both good and bad because the faster it spins, the more abrasive it gets, so easier it is to clean. But with these things, when you get them spinning real quick, those little wires that fly out and they'll stick right in your face. That's not fun. Uh, safety glasses. So we'll try that out. If it doesn't work, uh, I'm gonna go at it with a bigger one. So, no, that wasn't a whole lot of fun. Like everything else, that took way longer than expected. I put some degreaser on it, some of that green soap stuff. I took the air hose and I blew everything off and it left like streaks of all the excess oil and all the other crap that was left over. It kind of just like made like a camouflage print basically on the transmission. So um, it took a while to do that, a lot of work and it's getting near the end of the day. So I think I might do the energy drink thing. I'm not an energy drink kind of guy, but today's the day. So like, they were two for four bucks, why not? So we got this Joker energy drink. You guys ever try it? This one is, it's got vitamin B apparently. This one's naturally flavored. Mad energy, we got cherry lime. What? Cherry lemeade, whatever that is. Tropical mango. I don't like cherry or mango. What's your favorite energy drink? Not bad. So what I'm hoping to do now is take some Windex which is not original Windex in here, but it's a window cleaning solvent, which has alcohol in it. And I'm hoping that spraying that and scrubbing it down with some cloth is gonna get rid of the streaks and everything that I left. And I'm really hoping that this is gonna be the last step and then that's it because I gotta go in and edit that video and start thinking about what we're working on next. They got in my face. Ugh. So right now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm done cleaning that transmission. Uh, I went through two memory cards on the big camera and a battery pack and a half, so that should tell you how long I was working on it for. Rubbing it down with the Windex and getting rid of the streaks didn't really work. Next time, I'm just gonna take a pressure washer to it. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like now. Now, if you remember what it looked like before, I'll try to throw a picture of that up here somewhere or roll the footage before. So this is my Turbo 350 from the Acadian. It's a three-speed automatic transmission. And this is what it looks like now. Probably looks a lot better on camera than it does in person. So I pretty much got done what I wanted to do today, or at least got something done. I was hoping to do some chassis work on the car too, but that'll wait for tomorrow. I got all the tools I need to do it now. Like I said, one step at a time. 
I'm waiting for parts to come in for that transmission back there. When those get in, we'll piece that together best we can, put it on the engine, and start thinking about fitting the engine back inside the car. And we'll do it one step at a time. So, thanks for watching. It means the world to me. If you liked it, if you learned something, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I'm just starting off and I need all the help I can get. So, every time you guys hit that subscribe button, I really appreciate it. I try to release new videos all the time. So, hit the little bell icon thingy to get notified. And I'll see you guys very soon. Stay happy.